Right now, it's peaceful. Nobody has to wear a mask. We're not worried about this or that too much. But there could be terrible things happening very, very soon. Certainly, the world is becoming more and more fascist, using that term metaphorically, not necessarily politically. Everywhere. I mean, we are now in the midst of a month where people are bragging about their sin. Can you imagine that? Bragging about their sin. Being proud of their sin. What a terrible world we're in now. People are proud of their sin. It is promoted by government. And eventually, it's going to be the law of the land, not just that it's, there are laws that, that promote it, but that you cannot gainsay it. That you'll be put into a mental asylum or have drug therapy or put in prison. That's going to happen. And your children, I don't know what you people are doing that are having your children go to public school. You must like be under a rock or something. The things that your children are being told in public school that you have no control over are horrendous, horrible. They're teaching people, they're teaching your children not just perverse things. They're teaching your child a different salvation. That's what it basically is. It's demonic. It's a different salvation. There's only one salvation. There is the Holy Trinity, and we are to be one with the Holy Trinity. There is no other salvation. But their salvation, the world's salvation, which is mixed with perversity and with pride and with everything else, is that you redefine who you are as a human being. It's absolutely demonic. Pride Month is the voice of the demons. Now, I honestly didn't know that I was going to say this when I began this sermon. But you need to know this, that those things are happening. They're happening to your children. They're happening to you. You're in your workplace, and there's all kinds of possibilities of capitulation to these demonic things in some way. And they affect us, even if you don't give in to these things, even if you don't, are, are, are not afraid to say out loud that this, uh, all this stuff is demonically sinful. As a movement, an individual person could be, can have struggled with sin. But as a movement, this is a demonic movement meant to devour people. And that's what's happening. People are getting devoured left and right especially with all of the trans stuff, which is completely redefining what a human being is. Human being is made in the image of God to know God. They're not defined by their gender or their sexuality or anything else. The only thing that defines you is you are made in the image of God. That's it. Nothing else. Any other definition is of the demons. And that's what's happening in this world. Now, how are you going to inoculate yourself and your children against these things? Well, you can certainly do practical things, like take them out of public school, for sure. Uh, you can do practical things, like teach them about things. You can do practical things like, well, not give them a phone when they're five, and other stuff. But with all that practical stuff, you have to do something for your, for your soul. And some of you didn't do it last night. You lost that opportunity. Every single time we are present in the services, there's this great grace that comes upon us. Whether we have a good time at the service or not, probably sometimes we you know, pay attention really well, sometimes it's hard for us, et cetera, et cetera. God is helping us. And there is this great grace that comes upon us and it's cumulative, it's additive. And you are then inoculated against evil, against these false beliefs that are so prevalent in the world. And you gain more courage. You're going to need a lot of courage coming up. We're all going to need a lot of courage. Because the world is closing in, closing ranks. And you're going to have to basically <coughs> capitulate or suffer the consequences in the world. That's going to happen. And what are you going to do about it? Well, I suppose you could get a whole bunch of, 
you know, shotgun shells and food and water and water purifiers and all those things, you can do that. I'm not against that. It's a good idea to have a store of food, et cetera, et cetera. But all those things are just temporary measures. What you need is to have a heart that is only with God, a heart that's not of stone, but is of flesh. That's what you need. And your children need that too. And a big factor, while we're free, while we can gather and we don't worry that the police are going to come to our door, while we have windows that are open and not shaded, while we still have that, and until, we are, until that happens that we cannot have it, we have it. While that is possible for us, you're cheating yourself. You're killing yourself and your children by not availing yourself of God's grace in the services, in the prayers, in struggle. Now, perhaps some of you don't like this. Perhaps some of you think, well, he's pretty, you know, pretty bossy or cheeky here or something. I have only one thing I want to do with you. I want you to go to heaven. That's it. I don't want you just to learn theological concepts and stuff like that. I don't want to just be someone who serves the liturgy so you can have communion once in a while or comes to your house to bless it. I don't want to just be that guy. I want to be the one that's with you on the way to heaven. We all want to go together. So it's really critical for those of us that are lazy in some way, and that, that applies to everybody in this room. Me too. Now, I'm not the one who doesn't go to the services because if I didn't go to the services, there wouldn't be a service. But I am the one that sometimes doesn't say my prayers like I should or this or that. Every one of us has to just get better. There's not too much opportunity left before it gets really, really, really hard. And when it's really hard, are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready? And when your children come home from school after having been in school for I don't know, six or seven years, and they say things that seem unintelligible to you, crazy to you. Well, you had them in school for six years. You didn't present to them another option. You didn't show them that it was more, most important to get ready for communion, to come to church, to, to, to read the gospel together, to pray, to do prostrations together. You didn't show them that stuff. So of course they're going to say, I think this trans stuff is wonderful. Wow, there's now 118 sex genders now. I think there's 78 now, or is that orientations? I get so confused about it. I think there's literally 78 or 76 sexual orientations. And now they don't even, if you notice the alphabet soup, now they're saying plus at the end of it. Because the idea is that you can keep adding to it. You can keep adding to it. There's a movement, it's going to happen. They're going to add pedophilia to it. It's not going to be called that. It's going to be called minor attracted. They're going to add it to it. It's going to happen. That's what kind of the code word, the plus, has that in there. But eventually it's going to be right there. It's going to get longer and longer. And your children are going to be deluded. And you're going to be deluded. And maybe you're not going to be the same person in 10 years, and you're going to believe this stuff. What makes you think you're not going to be like everybody else? Are, are you a pillar? You're not a pillar. Any one of us, I could find myself saying terrible things about the, the meaning of life and what a human being is and, and all these kinds of things and capitulating to the agenda of pride if I don't continue to bathe in the Holy Spirit, bathe in that water that makes us clean. You gotta do it. 